Hello everyone, how's it going? It's 12.30. That means that you and I, that you have an appointment with us two, because it's time to discuss it with Drake. And can you believe we're on episode number 66 already? Woohoo! Today is going to be a fantastic topic. And the reason I have her here is because our topic today is how to choose the right home for you and your dog. So, you going to be quiet today? Okay, I'll put her down. So, yes, how to choose the right home for you and your dog. But, of course, before we get started, keep in mind if you ever miss an episode, all you got to do is go to YouTube, type in Drake's Real Estate TV, boom, subscribe, and then you'll never miss an episode from there on out. So, great. Let's get started. Data over the last several years shows that millennials are actually largely driven uh, larger driven in their real estate purchase, not necessarily by proximity to work, like we used to do, right? Or their readiness for marriage and kids, but instead by their desire to provide a nice environment for, you got it, their dogs. So sometimes people are awesome like that. If you're one of those people that are looking to move in order to create, to create a welcoming home for one of our fur babies, um, or one that you plan on getting, uh, here are a few things to look for. Number one, a workable floor plan. Do you have an older dog? If you do, you know, sometimes getting up and down the stairs might not be as easy. That's how I feel for myself, right? So perhaps a ranch style home might be better uh, to limit the, um, the amount of stairs that you have to go up every single night, right? So it might be better for for that dog's uh, stage of life. Same thing like when they're trying to get up on your bed. Sometimes you need to provide them some steps to get up. Because I'm assuming they sleep with you. Otherwise, why would you have a dog? A safe yard. When you're looking at houses, you're going to want to pay close attention to the outdoor space. Is there enough room for you to have a dog? And what size dog do you have? Dogs like to run. At least most of them do. Is the yard fenced? Is the fence in a decent shape? Okay, so you need to make sure that you're not looking at just the house, but you're looking at the whole entire perimeter because sometimes there can be areas for them to get in and out or for other creatures to get in and out. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So how about other doggy friends? Well, you may not be keen with other humans um, and their pets during this social distancing time. Of course, it's going to pass. But what it does, you may also want to make sure that you're visiting in an area that it is dog friendly. And there are some, some cities that are definitely more friendly than others. Um, they also have barking dogs, okay? Um, the neighbor's dog might be a nightmare. But one thing you have to consider is, you know, having a mega barker around you is, is not fun. Um, and you might have to call, you know, on them because that can be a nuisance. Uh, but it can be especially painful if that barking dog also gets your dog to bark. Luckily, Savannah's not like that. She doesn't even know dogs exist. She hates them. Anyways, how about a park nearby? Even if you don't have access to acres of land that, that you might own um, for your dogs to explore, having a park nearby can be a great substitute. And luckily, I've seen more and more and more and more dog parks actually uh, pop up, which is great because usually you always have two sections, one for small, one for large. Of course, that it's about, um, I forget what the... To what the divider is. I think it's about 40 pounds. If you're under 40, you go that way. If you're over 40, you go that way. Anyways, here's another one. The wildlife situation. And this is this this is very, very important. Um, are you looking at areas where there are actually coyotes or potentially other predators? So you not only have to think about the danger factor, but also what life will be like if you can't put in a doggy door. <coughs> I used to have doggy doors. Where I lived in certain um, neighborhoods, but um, now where I live, you know, it's it's not the smartest idea because you've got raccoons, skunks, possums, um, or just just the crazy coyotes. You know, if they're small enough, I guess they could probably get in. So, um, something to consider. Okay, how about the street that you're on? You know, are you on a busy street? So dogs do get out. It happens. Um, lucky for me, Savannah is not a, um, what do you call it? She's not a bolter, so she's not going to bolt out the door. But then again, you never know about what type of, 
um, temptation might come to the door. So being in a high traffic area could also increase the possibility that your dog could be injured. We definitely don't want that. So um, it's a good idea to have uh, that leash ready and by the door. Um, so hopefully they're not distracted. You know, when a child or visitor comes over or a serviceman um, accidentally leaves the gate open or something like that. So hopefully they're not gonna rush out. So uh, just keep that in mind. How about just regular nooks and crannies of the house, okay? If you are buying a two-story home, that unused space, if you have unused space under the stairs, that would make for a great doggy hangout area, okay? So you get rid of the Harry Potter closet and you turn it into a doggy daycare spa area, right? One thing that you also might need to consider, believe it or not, is the community that you live in. So if you are considering, you know, a breed like a pit bull, German Shepherd, Rottweiler, uh, some communities actually have restrictions, um, so you might want to um, make sure that you get a hold of your CCNRs and rules. Because, uh, like I said, some uh, condos and town communities also have size restrictions, um, and there's also usually a limitation on how many pets that you can have. So even if you own a piece of property, it's not guaranteed that your pets are going to be welcome there, right? So depending on the number of the breed... Um, like I said, there are, there could be restrictions within the HOA itself, or actually there's actually restrictions within the city. Uh, so make sure that you check that out. Basically, they don't want you running a dog pound out of your house is, is what they're trying. And then one last thing is the right flooring. So if you're buying new construction or planning to renovate, you also may want to think about dog friendly materials. So one of today's most popular options is luxury vinyl tile. Okay. Which gives you the look of wood. But it's much easier to care for, um, it's very pet friendly, and luxury vinyl is an excellent choice for those of us that have furry babies, right? It's long lasting, it's durable, easy to clean, and it's 100% waterproof. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you found it helpful for those of us dog lovers. For you cat lovers, mm, can't help you. All right, so uh, I just want to thank Realty Times for all that information that I provided for you today. They're always a wealth of information. Like I said, always, don't keep me secret. I share this with other dog lovers. And if there's a topic you'd like me to discuss in the future, just let me know and I'll get it on the calendar. Don't forget to live, laugh, and love. Be kind to one another. Have a fantastic week. Until we see each other again next week, when the next move matters, contact Drake for Homes. All right. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.